Worldwide as Dyslexia Awareness Month, a time to come together to raise awareness, share resources and tell stories about dyslexia's successes. Dyslexia is not a disease, it is a condition to know more about it. We have joining us a seasoned educational consultant and certified dyslexia assessor and consultant. She is the managing director of Dyslexia Nigeria, a non-profit organization with a vision to ensure all people with the condition are understood, acknowledged, empowered, and have equal access to opportunities. Uh, Dr. Adrian Ticolo, thank you very much for joining us. Good morning and thank you for having me. Let's uh, start with you know, learning more about uh, dyslexia. Uh, I understand it's not a disease. Um, so tell us a little bit more of what exactly it is. Thank you. Dyslexia is a specific learning difficulty, so it relates to education. It, it comes with difficulty with learning to read and write and spell and it could be compounded by poor working memory, concentration and attention. So basically you've seen a child having difficulty marrying the language science, I mean sounds and the alphabet names together. And that's the basis of learning to read. So reading is labored, is slow, and this could also then result in poor comprehension. So there's several signs of dyslexia, but basically it's a language processing disorder. So you find it in schools where children have difficulty learning to read. What are some of the dangers of not identifying this earlier? Um, I read somewhere that it's not, it, it's not curable, but it is manageable. Is that true first? And then what are the dangers of you know, not identifying it on time? Because I remember quite vividly, now in retrospect, I realized she had the condition, but nobody knew. The older sister would keep beating her. By the time we're in secondary school, she could not do the alphabet table as a secondary school. You know, so what are the dangers? Uh, uh, there's several dangers to unaddressed dyslexia. Let me say first, we have a really good window of opportunity to start doing something by grade one, round about when the child is about five years old. And when we don't do that, of course, the child finds it difficult to learn to read, won't do well in school. And then this can translate to, you know, depression, frustration, not achieving their potential. Like you said, dyslexia is a lifelong disorder. It's something that you inherit. You inherit the gene from your parents. So you can't change being dyslexic. You're always going to be dyslexic. You can manage the symptoms, the signs that come with dyslexia. So unaddressed dyslexia, even in adulthood, would mean you know, you're not employable. If you haven't been to school or you've dropped out or you, know, you haven't been able to achieve your potential. And the loss to the individual not being employ employable you know, or, not, or being underemployed can also then lead to other mental health problems like you know, depression, even crime, um, delinquency, um, antisocial behavior. Even in school, the children are usually labeled as lazy you know, and not trying hard enough. And this can lead many times to poor behavior even in school. So there's a lot of issues that come with unaddressed dyslexia. A great thing you mentioned, uh, because it's something I was going to ask, um, if it is um, a genetic you know, disorder, if it's something that would, can be transferred from parents to ch uh, children. But before we get to talk a little mm -hmm. bit more about that, um, what experiences have you had with um, people who suffer from you know, this condition? And at the same time, uh, talk a little bit more on, um, do they have, are they skilled in any other you know, um, aspect? Um, is the condition only affecting their ability to learn? Can a child who's dyslexic still be able to be successful in any other um, direction? Awesome. So dyslexia is a specific learning difficulty or disability. And that means it relates to something in particular. And specific learning difficulties have a particular characteristic in common. And that is, the, the person that has that difficulty would be deficient in some areas, but quite good in other areas. And that's one area where you know someone that has a specific learning disability as against a general learning disability. So dyslexics are quite good with things that are creative, for instance. They're very good with musicality, you know, thinking outside the box, art, design, and a lot of those things, they're less, you know, less as competent when it comes to reading and writing and putting their ideas on paper. But they're very good in many other areas. So, you know, um, dyslexics don't have a difficulty with learning. They have a difficulty with learning to read. Okay. 
Okay, generally our education system is mm. put in such a way you get into a class, there's a teacher, uh, you can sometimes you have one teacher to about 50 students, sometimes even more. Um, how, how is it being addressed, do you think, in today's education system? Are teachers aware that there are students who are quite brilliant, they just have a little difficulty uh, getting things together at as quickly as others. It's a shame, I have to say, at least in Nigeria, that teachers, a lot of the teachers, I wouldn't want to give, you know, percentage, but really, really high percentage of teachers do not know anything about dyslexia. For those that know, they probably have heard the word, but they still can't identify the signs. So it's a shame that a lot of students will fall through the cracks in school. They're still falling through the cracks. The teachers don't know the signs, they can't identify them. And I have to say that dyslexics usually have medium or average to high intelligence. So the level of intelligence masks their difficulty. Like I said, they're good in many other areas, and dyslexia is not affected by intelligence. And so the child is very good verbally and in many other things. And, and the difficulty with learning, especially with reading and writing and literacy, you know, is masked by teachers think, thinking they're just being lazy, they're not trying hard enough, you know, they're not putting in their best effort. And usually you see it in their report cards, oh, can do better, it's very capable. They just don't recognize the fact that the child has a disorder that they're struggling with. You know, so unfortunately, a lot of the teachers don't know they're what, not what's trained. What's been done to raise awareness on this issue? Because even the teachers that are supposed to be impacting knowledge, I mean, lack the knowledge aware. themselves, <laughs> how, how are they going to uh, do well? Exactly. That's why organizations like us and, and other dyslexia organizations around the world are raising awareness this month and throughout the year, you know, that teachers need to understand there is something called dyslexia. This is how it affects children. And this is what would happen if, you know, nothing is done. Unfortunately, I also find that even in teacher training colleges, before they get into even teaching in the classroom, they're not taught anything about dyslexia. And dyslexia makes up 80 to 90% of all specific learning difficulties. It's so prevalent, one in five persons has dyslexia. And so every teacher will come across a dyslexic child by far more than just one. If you have a, about 30 children in your class, there are probably about five to six children showing the signs of dyslexia. So if we have this increasing yeah. number, uh, sorry, if, mm -hmm. if we have this increasing number of uh, students and pupils with this condition, um, what is being done to get the government to find a way to incorporate this awareness in the curriculum? So we don't have a situation where, um, like you said, they fall through the cracks and the, then this, we this, lose this, out. This, this is what we, we're, we're all about. This is what we're talking about. And there's several things that can't be done. The first is for you know this to be included in the curriculum for teacher training. The other thing is to continuous training for teachers. Even when you're in the service, you know, continuous training for teachers. But aside from that, you also have a situation where we expect that government should give some legislation or law compelling schools, for instance, to train teachers certain hours, number of hours in a year, for instance, in dyslexia and other learning difficulties. Because if we say we're giving equal access or equal opportunity to children and no child should be left behind, you will leave children behind if you do not recognize that they learn differently and you can't address that. We also expect that, you know, there could be legislation that forces schools to do like a universal screening. If we did a screening for every year one child, you know, just entering into primary school, we would find those that are showing the signs already, and that's the window of opportunity that we have, you know, to make a difference then. If children in grade one that show these signs are given remediation at that age, by the time they get into third year, third grade, you, you know, they would be overcoming a lot of the signs already. You probably wouldn't even be able to tell that they're struggling. But if nothing is done at the time, the, the slight struggles that they have will become a learning disability that will be so difficult to remediate. And I see that all the time. I see 12 year olds, 15 year olds, you know, 17 year olds that can't read at all. Not for lack of effort, but because they're struggling with something that the teachers don't know how to address. Do, do parents know about this? Uh, does, is there a lot of awareness among parents 
um, about dyslexia and also talk about the Go Red campaign. How is that running? Yes, yeah, so, so um, unfortunately, I mean, parents are largely in the dark, but parents know their children, they feel something is wrong, you know, they're wondering why can't my child, and during this lockdown, it's, you know, thrown a lot more parents into, you know, recognizing this because now they've had to work with the children and they've seen that, you know, the difficulties the children are going through. So, unfortunately, a lot of parents don't also know. It would be good if schools knew because then schools can make all the difference. Most of the signs of dyslexia are first found in school when the child is beginning to learn to read. And the Go Red campaign. So the idea of the red is the fact that dyslexics, like a lot of us know, the red marker, the red viral, that signifies the failures, the X's that you've gotten in school, you know, and the difficulty that you've had, and all the red virals in your, in your <laughs> book, you know, from. And we're taking that red color back, and so we're joining forces would succeed with Dyslexia and Go Red from the UK and other dyslexia associations around the world. And we're taking that color back and we're using it as a sign, you know, for awareness for this disorder. And we're saying this is the time, there's an urgency to do something now. And you know, red is a disruptive color. You yeah. cannot ignore red. Right, and indeed. so, you know, if we use it, it's like a code red thing. There's an urgency now to do something until things really get really bad. Well, what are your plans for the rest of uh, this month? Is there a plan to uh, maybe have some sort of collaboration to go to schools, now that schools are back in session, to create awareness, maybe teach the teachers who will in time, um, in turn, find out the students? Oh, absolutely. This is what we do naturally as Dyslexia Nigeria. We visit schools, we go to public schools, private schools, we talk to teachers, talk to schools, you know, talk to parents about dyslexia and raise awareness, even to the students themselves. In fact, we have a program where we send volunteers to, you know, public schools to teach children that are showing signs of dyslexia. This month, you know, the whole of October is Dyslexia Awareness Month, and we, I know some schools are, schools are now beginning to resume, but, you know, there's a lot of restrictions going into school at the moment so we're having a lot of online um, you know events we're having free webinars at this time talking to people about dyslexia and the science of dyslexia we're having a screening of Micah there's a film about a short film about dyslexia and the dif difficulties this Sunday at the Alliance Francais Centre in Ekoi. Um, we will be having some free online consultations. There's quite a number of things that we're doing this, this month, you know, and people just need to follow us on our social media handles to see all of the things that we're offering. What is the, what is the, as quickly as possible, like 30 seconds, what is the message um, that you must put out um, in, this, in this month? We are all different. We must recognize our differences and we must ensure that we work to support those that need the support. Okay. Fantastic. Thank you very much, Dr. Thank you so much. Ticolo, for coming on The Breakfast. And good luck. Thank you so very much. Thank you for having me. Have a good day.